Thank you for clicking play. This is PK of the PK Comic Book 411 doing another bed review. Yes, this is the other publishers I was telling you about, apart from the big two, DC and Marvel. But look at that art right there. The detail. I would usually say Asylum is, is my favorite uh, art in any book, but this is Todd McFarlane's Savior up to issue two. And I would have to upgrade this as the best art in any issue, in my humble opinion. But let's move over here and start doing it by author this time. Here we have Grant Morrison. Uh, Nameless is now up to number four. <coughs> Space Odyssey, things go bad. Not sold on it, other people are loving it. Annihilator is now finished at issue six. And reading issue six, I honestly have to say, I need to go back and read the others. It sort of took a left turn, as is Grant Morrison's always doing. But my God, um, I didn't know who was who at the end because they were all doppelgangers of themselves. And uh, here we have Grant Morrison's 18 Days. This has promised people. This could be as big as Game of Thrones. He basically said that the Indian mythos is more complex and deep than... Game of Thrones, as well as it has the magic, it has the players in it. Um, this could be big, right here. And by the way, this is a dollar. It's a loss leader. Going on to J.M. Straczynski, Dream Police and Twilight Zone, his uh, run of uh, two story arcs, which are all intertwined. I, I know that this is sort of the wrong sell to it, but I swear, this Twilight Zone, 1 through 12, that, um, I think Rahner or Rainer is doing it now, this was fabulous. I can't recommend it enough. But to say the least, Dream Police that he has done is so fun that this is actually more like Twilight Zone than his Twilight Zone arcs. Moving on, we have Mark Miller with an AR. Chrononauts was so good, I stopped and said I'm getting the trade. I don't really live in a bad section of the town. <laughs> it was just an ambulance. Um, uh, and then we have uh, MPH. It was a very succinct story. It only went up to five. You know, some uh, illegals get some pills that make them go fast. That makes them flash. They did some bank robberies. Um, not too deep there, Mr. Miller. Uh, going into Warren Ellis, Trees is now up to ten. And I'm going to have to say that it's really heating up. Now, Warren Ellis, when he started off Moon Knight, I think everyone's trying to, like, follow suit, and they just really can't do it. But this injection, people, it's the first time that Warren Ellis is really putting thought into dialogue. Um, I'm very excited about this one, and I also stopped uh, getting the singles on this one. I'm going to go straight to trades. Uh, continuing with Mark, we have the uh, Jupiter Circle and Jupiter's Legacy. This uh, number five was so delayed that I, I pretty much forgot what the one through four was, and then immediately they pumped out four of Jupiter's Circle, which is sort of predating the legacy and going through all of the players that are uh, part of Jupiter's Legacy. And then we have Starlight already going to be a movie. It is sad, bittersweet, lovely. Uh, you know, no one believed him. He saved another world. He came back. His kids won't even have dinner with him because they all think he's crazy. But in the end, aha! So get the trade of this. You're going you're gonna to want to read that before the movie comes out. Going into Brian K. Vaughn, we all know Saga. It's up to 29. I don't need to spend any time on that. If you're not reading it, you should be. And now he just came out with number one of We Stand Our uh, Guard. And that's uh, Canada versus U.S. in the year 2020. I believe. The only thing I'll have to say about this is I'll at least get number one and uh, inside inside uh, gossip. I'll just say three penny beaver. Three penny beaver. Yep. Three penny beaver. Remember that. Jonathan Hickman, we all know him from Infinity. Avengers. New Avengers. This dying in the dead is so wonderful that I stopped and I'm going to get the trade on that. But I still get the singles of uh, East of West. I want to remind everyone that there's a The World source book and that's December 20, uh, 2014, which is just when 16 came out. Currently, it's up to issue 19. Um, I think that a lot of people are trying to copy that, including Copperhead is almost copying that, just with some animal faces. That There's like an uh, old wild west, if you will, in space or in a different 
take. Um, it just feels the same to me. Anyway, hold your breath. We're going to go back. Moving on with our big name authors, we have issue 10 of Kirkman, um, of Outcast. Already, TV deal is already on the way. Going to Ed Brubaker in the film noir. I love Velvet. I think it's wonderful. I think that you learn stuff while uh, reading this, and that's important to me, is to learn things. Um, uh, why the Last Man does that a lot, too, that there's a lot of facts in there um, that I like. Uh, fade Out. Where is my issue number six? It's killing me. Out of all of this, it's not there. Um, but, again, film noir, Hollywood, corrupt Hollywood, if you will, in the 50s and 60s. Um, <coughs> I showed you Tom McFarlane's Savior. Make sure you put that on your pull list, or at least look out for the trade. And I'd like to have him in my big author section. This is abhorrent, people. Don't waste your time. I'm sorry. I don't like to do reviews. This is bastardized. It's awful. I would not waste your time. I'm saddened by it. On to Justin Jordan. Thumbs up to this guy. This is actually like the original X-Files. The first couple of seasons of X-Files. And that's Deep State. They're up to uh, number seven on that. Um, I'm going to say the pacing, he took his time on this one, whereas in Dark Gods, the first two were like, what's sort of going on? And then it just went into Blitzkrieg speed. Dark, Dark Gods is now up to number six, and I believe it wasn't supposed to be an ongoing, and it may be now. And full disclosure here, this is spread number five, and I stopped collecting spread. It's just too gory for me. I'm sorry, people. For those that uh, like gore and uh, cannibalism, and it's, it's almost like... Walking Dead goes alien. I shouldn't say alien. Goes viral. <laughs> um, it, it's it's good storytelling. The guy knows is a great protagonist. I'm just not into it. Um, many people are. So Kyle Higgins put Cowell, which is the Chicago Organiz Organized Workers League, and puts a political spin into superpowers within Chicago. I like it. It, it it's it's something it's something that no one's well. Nothing I'm reading in all of this is like Cal. Let me put it that way. And therefore, I'm reading it. Another one that follows suit is Eric Stevenson's They're Not Like Us. Now, granted, San Francisco, yep, it has Hayton Ashbury references. They're, I, I think they're past number five, and I haven't gotten to it. And he's Eric Stevenson. He can do what he want. Really funky art here, um, but uh, it's a wonderful story. You may not have heard of it. I just want to alert you to it. Now let's go to some of my favorites. Now I'd say these four are my hidden gem top favorites. And I shouldn't say hidden because now they're starting to get um, some attention. This Steven, I'm going to say Sedgwick. I don't know if he is a, a big name. Remember, I just started reading two years ago. But he does everything. He does the cover. He does the story. He does the art. And it's, and it's, it's almost like a family story. Um, but it's about, you know, good and evil and death vigil is the family. It's, it's, again, one of my top four. Moving on to Williamson's Birthright. They are now up to issue eight. And uh, the best way to explain this one is you have stories of old like Time ban Bandits, um, Dark Crystal, all of those ones that we saw as a kid. He said, well, what happens after that story? What happens after the movie? I want to talk about when, you know, the credits roll, then what happens? And so he uh, chose Birthright as uh, the title for that. And, uh, again, one of my top four. This, Autumn Land's Tooth and Claw, there is a, a copyright thing so that what used to be Tooth and Claw is now the Autumn Lands. And it is something phenomenal. that I had to stop and reread this because of the intricacies, intricacies that he put in. And I just want to show you one part where Dusty, the protagonist dog, it's all dog people, but they're uh, evolved. Actually, the barbarian is the human. Um, he wakes up and does all of his uh, duties for the day. Something I didn't notice, as he goes and knocks out every light, it's because it's day, right? It opens up. See how they're all open right there? Well, if you look really, really close, there's fairies doing it. That's why this expression of the fairies is, ah, they were disturbed. That type of intricacy going throughout each issue, that's top notch. IMO. 
Mercenary C. It, it's, it's Parallax at its best. It's Johnny Quest. I have the trade here to show you how they do some of those works. Notice the blur in the background so you know what's in the foreground. The different co colors of the palettes that they use, whether it's going to be day or night. Um, look at all the blue scale there, right? And then you'd have the orange scale again with the blur of the background. See the palm tree in the background with the blur? I always look forward to Mercenary C, and we're up to issue number eight. Over here we have the finale of uh, Rushes, as in the band Rushes, as in Neil Pert Rush. Clockwork Angels as the name of the album. It's six of six. They could have done so much more with this, but it was, it was a ho-hum but lovely story to witness. It just wasn't deep. It maybe didn't need to be, but six of six, that's the end of that. Jimmy Robinson with The Empty. I love the coloring. Wasn't sure about the story. No reviews there. It, it's it's one of those things, if I didn't have a lot to read, I would love to read the trade. Roche Limit, not Roche Limit, ended at number five. And please, could you make it so you can actually read the issues? Jeez. So Roche Limit. I finally uh, figured out that it's not Roche. It's Roche. And when it comes to that, imagine if you had two orbits... And at some point, they're going to get close to the gravitational portion that that planet dissipates and goes into the other planet. That's actually the definition of the Roche limit. So then what they did is they went to 25 uh, years in the future, and you have Roche limit planned destiny. And now it just feels like aliens, or alien to Pisces has my attention because of... Uh, Sort of a Vietnam flashback. The first one had a lot more in it, and this was specifically um, the Vietnam. But look at the cover. It's it's an interesting thing. Not too sure what Pisces has to do with anything. Um, has my attention. It's on my radar, I should say. Captura and Bitch Planet. I'm going to let you make your own decisions on that. Bitch Planet, to me, was too in my face. It was too, too foreground in what it wanted to say. A little subtle, subtle, subtlety would have gone a long way. And that's Kelly Sue De DeConnick, uh, wife of Matt Fraction. All right, so I think we're done with this side. And now we go to Manifest Destiny. I hope number 15 is the last one. It's truly a great story. It's a take on uh, Lewis and Clark, but they're chronicling some crazy animals <coughs> in frontier America. Copperhead, as I talked before, to me it's a sort of space animal head version of Hickman's East of West. People are loving it. It didn't it didn't capture me as, as much as they did the other people. Colin Bunn, he's been doing too much writing. This number six of six was an ending that parallels Snyder's The Wake ending. But, oh, I need to finish it? Oh, it's ended. Uh, sort of a Sort of a sorry thing that this ended the way it did, but he just had too many titles. Bought this because it was the number one seller. People are obviously coming to comics in waves before, uh, waves that they haven't before, and Orphan Black topped the charts. I went through a couple of pages. I still need to read the whole thing. I watched the show. I just don't understand the comic. And also, I put this here because of a TV reference. <clears throat> it wasn't The Leftovers, but it was during The Leftovers, and this is almost a take of the... Of, of the TV show. It's almost exactly the same as a TV show, and it's sort of killing me that they each have a certain item that wakes up their past lives. It's all about being past lives and the cult that surrounds it and the politics that surrounds someone that is always going to be alive, um, just in a different body, same soul. But let's go to some fun stuff. We have Escape from New York and Big Trouble in Little China. Uh, we're at number 12 here, and we're at number 7 here. This one's a little bit gritty. This one has a lot of ha-ha laughs. And, uh, you know, people say I look like Kurt Russell, so obviously I watch these, the, both of these movies, and I'm enjoying the comics. Uh, Karen Gillan, um, The Wicked and Divine, doesn't have my attention. Um, nothing's wrong with it. Maybe something will happen. Number 15, already have the producers of Walking Dead TV show to put this into uh, TV. It's uh, 15, and I love the fact that they did have an end to it. Um, it's not one of those things that they wanted their bread and butter just by making a story keep on going past 15. Uh, <coughs> that is admirable to me, and I think Brisson and Christmas are going to be rewarded for that because now it's going to be a TV show. 
Caitlin Kittredge. Except for that Badger, Graw Badger uh, guy, I would say that's the coolest name in, co in comics right now, is Caitlin Kittredge. And uh, she's, <clears throat> she's getting... The reveal of Coffin Hill was amazing, I would say 1 through 10. Now, she's popping around in timelines so much that now I haven't read any of these to keep them together. Actually, I stopped at 14 so I can read them in one in one read and hopefully uh, get more of the intricacies and subtleties. Scott Snyder, Witches, I'm up to issue four. I thought I had five. Um, I don't think it, I think there is more issues than that. I need to read these and see if I want to continue. And here we have Asylum. Uh, apart from Savior that was over there, I would say the art in here was fantastic. We're up to issue 10. I think it's ongoing now. And there's a couple of issues that I wanted to pull up from my pull list, but they got the old artist back. I don't know the politics behind it, but I was going to drop it, but the old uh, artist came back, and so it's back on my pull list. Actually, it was never taken off. Going into the sort of D&D &D section over here, we have um, Images Rain, and it's up to number five. And it's just about to get interesting. Uh, I went back and started, I read it over again, one through four, and there's there's something to be said here. This this could be a really fun title. The Blood Queen, I think, is a gem. I think now there's a Blood Queen with a subtitle underneath it. But I got number one, and the one thing I can say about this is that they really got the old Victorian English wonderfully done the dialogue that's actually what captured me besides the art and the lovely girls it's it's really the the attention to dialogue moving on to legends of boulders gate this is number four and i need to figure out where they are on that because that's jim zub jim zub is the guy that's writing all of the pathfinders here and i've stopped collecting the singles because this is the hardcover. It reminds me of the D&D &D hardcovers. You know what I mean by that? Deities and Demigods and your Player's Handbook and DMG. Uh, I love the size of it, so now on my shelf I have a certain size for these books. And in the last previews, not the current one, the last one, there's a whole article about Jim Zub, just so you know. Keeping that in there. Canadian writer. So, he's obviously getting the spotlight. Uh, Rick Remender's low. Haven't read the last couple of issues. Let's we'll see where it's going. I know that sales have dropped off. And this is sort of funny. God, Jonathan Hickman's God is Dead. But I didn't put it over there with Jonathan Hickman over there because Mike Koss has been doing it for at least, I don't know, 20 issues. But check this out. I thought it was done. It was laborious to go through these. It, it became uh, bi-weekly, so the stack is higher than any, any of these. And I swear, I wanted to know about other mythos, right? Like Legends and Lore of D&D, like I was saying. I wanted to know about, you know, whether it was Indian mythos or whether it was Norse mythos. And it really just sort of got derailed. And then I thought it was done with this issue. Well, guess what? <laughs> it wasn't less than a month. Now it's all back again. It... It really pulls out my hair. I, that's, oh, okay. Anyway, every time I see it in my pull list, I, last thing but not least, Jason Aaron, Southern Bastards. If you're not reading it, read it. Get the trades. He's fabulous. Fabulous. Very George R. R. Martin S. That he, he'll change the protagonist in a moment's notice, and you're sort of left with going, whoa, I missed that guy. But it's, it's, uh, if you're not reading it, you got to read it. And then, when it comes to Valiant, I went all trades, except for this that has the mask. Uh, and I have yet to do another full vlog on just Valiant. Um, but if you are a Valiant reader, you need to get the handbook. All right, guys. I have a lot of reading to do. And I hope you enjoyed this. Until next time, this is PK Comic Book. Thank you for clicking play. And even like Kevin Spacey in House of Cards and what Will Wheaton says, play more games.